Well, who would like to see some more gay lawyers? Of course, all the gays spring in actions because they all want to see gay lawyers. Honestly, we all want to see gay lawyers. <laughs> Thank you for all of the resubs, by the way, guys. I really, 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 really appreciate it. off meeting Polly so we're gonna continue as you can see I lay I saved twice like an idiot December 27th 10 a.m. district court courtroom number three Ah, oh, fuck, I can't voice this guy. Damn it. Okay. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, your honor. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Uh, very well, no opening statement, so uh... Not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Uh, r right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Wait, wait, what the fuck? Huh? Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? But must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. B right. I call my witness my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boot shop owner. Witness, state your profession. I, uh, I'm... I am the proprietor of the restaurant and went noodle at Court Lake. And I uh, also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yup, yup, I was. I don't remember what voice I gave them. Dumb. Anyways, thanks for the sub at Mascara Pose. Yo, Raider, thanks for the three months. I hope you're doing well, buddy. Please testify. Wait a second. I still haven't heard who this old, uh, old guy is. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah! I have pre predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. The, wit no, the witness will state his name. <laughs> well, uh... I'm not really sure. I, uh, what do you mean? My, uh, my memory. Your honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. 
Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can't testify. Very well. Let's hear this testimony then, shall we, witness? Oh god, here we go. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Uh, yeah. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats, as usual. Then I heard a bang. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, a boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. <sighs> there is nothing to question my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now! Uh, yes! Uh, Mr. Wright? What are you saying? Of course he'll cross-examine the witness! Uh, excuse me? Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed! I see, well then, let's just take our time. You may cross examine as a witness. What the fuck? Just after midnight. Just after midnight, you say? Oh, I hope this is in! Are you sure? Pretty sure, I hope. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? D don't glare at me like that. I, I remember it clearly. I did. I, uh, I, I keep moving the voice. You see, continue. Where you rent boats as per usual. Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. Th that's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, what's exactly not good enough? Uh, your Honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? What? The prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. And where did the bang seem to come from? I, I, I cannot. From the lake. I, ca I don't know what the voice was. Oh, no. From the... <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing it today. I don't- I don't know how to voice shit! From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Uh, yep. Good. Continue. I- Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men out there. Yup. But you couldn't see them clearly. I, uh, at the time, that is. At the time? So you heard two gunshots total. I, uh, That's what Lada said in her testimony yesterday. By your window? I am by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? 
Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Uh, are you sure? D Dad! Fucking just calling it. Dead certain key! He said, I can't believe he's dead, and he was walking by, too! Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him! That Edgeworth boy! This sounds like a decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Fun karma, he lured me into cross exam so he could set up set me up for a fall. N Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I I still have an objection. Your honor. We proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness testimony is true. I still have an objection! Your Honor, this witness claims that Edward said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie... Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good, there's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please, can you hear me, sis? Please, I still, it still said that the gun shot three rounds. I still need to, I'm still hung up about that fact. I'm still mad. We need your help. Nick needs you. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough! The witness may leave the stand. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial, nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. W what No! This court finds the defendant Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Uh-oh. The accused will surrender the court immediately. To be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. Well. B b wait! Hope you enjoy the series like I did. These games were amazing as a kid and I love the voices. Stay Me! Awesome. Huh? What? Wow, Larry! <laughs> what, what are you doing here? Listen! You gotta listen to me! I- I was- I was there in the park the night of the murder! Uh, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday, but- but today I remembered it! R remembered what? The gunshot! I heard it too! Uh, order! What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided! I call for adjournment! One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did! A gunshot that night! I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony! Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember! Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer! It's- it's just not right! I'll testify, let me testify! Order, order! Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court! I'm not quite sure how to proceed! Judge, you've already given your decision! Yeah, sounds like Phoenix right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The trial is over! Nick! This is it! Larry's given us a final chance at this! She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. 
You're right, okay. Your honor, if there is another witness, it is your duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. <clears throat> Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. Wh what is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now! What? The court will adjourn for five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Phew, that was too close. Ah, sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. <sighs> I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth, you're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yeah. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found, and he found the balloon in the, uh, the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth? Uh, you say something, right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It... it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. Not ten minute trial this time. We'll make this one, uh, we'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen! I mean, I understand. Like, if someone sh got shot in front of you, and you'd be like, you'd probably be shocked too. You'd do something really fucking stupid. I know I would. <laughs> I, I... Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything you, that you saw. On the night of December 24. Okay. <laughs> right! <laughs> Leave it to me! Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edward was right about this being our big break. That night, I was out on a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and I, uh, I found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. And just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. All right, well. Holy. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin! Uh, well, okay, first of all, what time was it? No, oh, it was after 11 when I went out in the boat. But that time everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on the boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something and I found it. 
looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. Objection. How's the playthrough going? Um... Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figured I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12, yeah. You're not sure? Yeah! Don't give me that face! I'm not some owner of you and Sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. And just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order! Well, Mr. Butts! Whoa, whoa! Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case! Uh, so after you heard that single gunshot, I went home. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Hmm. So the first one is obviously that he didn't see anything. Um, oh, whoops, I didn't mean to press that. Let's look. Um, the DL6 incident, Polly. Okay, hold on. Let me let me see if that works. Uh, okay, that one that one's right. I knew it. But wait a sec, Larry. Oh, whoops! I clicked out of the game. <laughs> what? You only heard one bang? You're sure? <laughs> That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday. That she heard two bangs, and the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness. See, I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? <laughs> what? <laughs> Mr. Butts. <laughs> what? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio to with my headphones. What? Order, order, and stop that booing. M Mr. Butts. You were listening to the radio with your headphones. Y yeah so what? What, that a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? He's our only chance! We have to let him continue! <laughs> What? No. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. But nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know what he's lost. Please give your testimony and be sure to include the details like your radio. Right, leave it to me! I, would, I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like, but I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. <sighs> True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Objection. Wait!
Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me, DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. But very well, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Can't believe I'm believing. <laughs> Continuing this charade. <laughs> So you turn on the radio. Right! I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know. I don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve alone. I shouldn't have said anything. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Rhodes, how loud was your radio set to that uh, evening? Okay. Real booming loud. Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. Can you prove that? No, of course you can't. No, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know. What did he? What did she say? Mr. Mike, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could know what a radio DJ said to us? I need Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care! We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask? Fine, very well. Mr. Boots, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard the gunshot. So it's before 12. Wait, I... Hold on. That would... Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Um, 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 um. It shows an empty lake. Wait, oh no! I should probably press this. Are you sure? Of course not, but she had this real sexy voice. Maybe Von Karma was right, I'm not sure how that helped us at all. Okay. Wait, hold on. This isn't it. Shit. Okay, never mind. That's not it. Uh. I'm so confused. I mean, it would make sense that. Okay, it is that one. Larry! Are you sh absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. <laughs> and if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. There's something the matter, Mr. Wright. Your Honor. Did you hear what the witness just said? <laughs> the DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. 
That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see what the time was uh, on the photo, a photo taken when the gun triggered Mrs. Hart's, uh, triggered Mrs. 50 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. What the fuck? Order, order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him, suspicious. What? what? Hm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mrs. Plus claim heard? Uh, no, Larry is right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence. There, the gun. Three fucking shots. Take this, bitch. This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Yeah! Yeah! Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order! Order! I guess that would make sense out of yesterday's testimony. Bah! You waste no time again with your empty statements. Yes, the pistol was fired three times. But do you have any proof that it was fired before midnight? Do you have proof that the witness didn't just think he heard something? Indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, there is no turning back now. Do you have evidence that proves there was a gunshot before midnight? Do you have evidence that it proves Mr. Butts wasn't just hearing things? Uh, 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 uh. Look at this photograph. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Ms. Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The time stamp on the photo reads December 24, 11.50 p.m. Hmm? But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Huh? <gasps> Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words... There was a gunshot at the time that Larry claims. Order! Order! <laughs> that would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes, af 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. <gasps> What's wrong, Nick? I have it, I have it! Remember the case with the steel samurai? Uh, yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right, I mean, is this safe? Safe, we've already gotten the guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Y yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. Ah! <coughs> what do you mean, Mr. Wright? So you finally are realized the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Niles Edward himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, Rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on the lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. In defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired in that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, 
The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have pho photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The time on the photo says 0015, but Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Uh... I am a little lost. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what, what the fuck is Phoenix trying to say. I'm a little lost myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably Edgeworth and the murderer. Because I, huh. <laughs> I'm so fucking confused, dude. <laughs> I am so fucking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't make sense if it was the murderer in Hammond. But, oh well. Okay, I guess this was correct! <laughs> Alright! Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer! After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met at- Oh, right, okay. What? what Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when a murderer took Robert Hammond's place. L Ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer, then. I don't know! Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. Y you don't know! You wait. I don't know because he never told us. Oh! I see! Okay! The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, the old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop! Why did he... There weren't any boats on the lake then! Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Obviously in here? Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? 
Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. The night he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns to the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In the other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned the boat? The boat shop! <laughs> Mr. Wright! What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really, but if I think I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond uh, to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeriff and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Uh, Wright? It was the bo- it had to be him. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice, both missed Edgeriff on purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Uh, know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations, the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness! The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. Then it shows that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Mrs. Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, he drops out of the sh- he drops out. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see, to someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the other- on the- on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shot uh, caretaker swam back to his uh, shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. <laughs> Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. Bailiff, whack his pee pee. <laughs> the boat shop caretaker, quickly. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edwards, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important. I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Your Honor, Sir, Bailiff, what are conducting a trial here? I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? F find him, quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its force to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. We live to see another day! Woohoo! Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. 
Sure, once I uh, sifted for his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on the trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, d did you say something? Uh, don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax! I'm sorry. Uh, but I fear it's not over for me yet. W what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Hello, buddy. Yeah. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently, but it never takes someone's life. Never! Nick! Yo! How's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in an aisle, so <laughs> Maya! S swooning Me? Oh, oh yeah. I do remember feeling faint. Right on! Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, right, Nick. Huh? Me? Uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved that drift in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Not the confession we were expecting. Not really. <laughs> Larry, you really helped that out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty! <laughs> uh, but seriously, Nick. The boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. We just spoiled the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is... I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, <laughs> it means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? B but why you, Larry? <laughs> um, actually, yeah, why me, Nick? Enough with the silent treatment! Nick! Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yeah, in grade school. They saved me. Miles. Then Larry. Uh, they saved me, and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey, Larry! What's he talking about? <laughs> oh, um... Sorry, I kind of forgot. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. Uh, a class trial? You remember, Larry? Spring, end of third grade? A kid in our cl uh, class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? 
Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 still inside. Oh <laughs> yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skip PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So they thought you did it? Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as a defendant. I... I didn't do it. Guilty! He did it! Guilty! Give the money back! You're such a meanie! No one play with him! Oh god. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I... I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. <laughs> the only thing that belongs in trial is evidence! Anything else is no place! You should all be ashamed, amateurs! But Miles? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> He's so tiny! <laughs> He's doing the pose! It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize! Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof! That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent! But, but Miles, it was your money that was stolen! Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need to... Why don't you all just shut up? <laughs> this is always how it goes. Everybody ganging up on picking one on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. And for that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. <laughs> if I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Anyway, Edruff and I talked after the class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father! A famous defense attorney! Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The TL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I learned Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of the Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, it's not the edge I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him, I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he became. <laughs> this is so fucking gay! In every conceivable way! Happy Pride Month, everybody! <laughs> I 
That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why it became a defense... That is so... That There is absolutely no heterosexual explanation for this! You don't do this! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no way. <laughs> if I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not in court. Andrew believed in me and I believed in him. He's in pain and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real edger. I'm the... Me out of for free? Uh, yeah, I helped you because I believed in you. Except that I remember saying I'd do it for free. Ha <laughs> ha, Nick! Nick! Nick, we have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? R right. And very well may be. First, um, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence and no, I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus We're shipping Narumi to over there. It's so fucking gay. I can't, I can't, I can't get over it. I understand now why, why Viz keeps mentioning these two to me. She just won't stop. <laughs> I'm so shocked. Jesus Christ. Someone responded to my tweet with this. Facts, facts, facts. Just facts. Just fa even though it sounds like he's he's saying facts, like facts. <laughs> Did you ever throw your entire career path to the side just because you need to talk to your childhood crush? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you look as grim as always. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. 
class trial. What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Uh, your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it, in third grade? Lunch money? Oh. All oh, right. Yeah, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth didn't... Uh, Mr. Edwards, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Sure. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That <laughs> said... It does sound like that kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple, to a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. <laughs> what do you mean? My father was taken from me and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Dyogi. He had to be the shooter any way you look at it. Yet he was found innocent. The defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in an elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocence. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he was taken he has taken on, none were left unsolved, and not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But but that's I know. It's possible some of the suspects were innocent, indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine, uh, determine that in every case, all von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth, if what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He, he's right! Now there's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Mm. Fuck! This game's getting, uh, quite a lot, I'm gonna be honest. I wanna see something. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, this is a very bad idea. Don't show it to him. N Nick, no! That's a photo of his father! Don't show him that! You're right. Now probably is the good time to judge upon those memories! What is it? Um, uh, nothing. <laughs> that was a really bad idea! It was that case that changed my life, and tomorrow on December 28th, that statue of limitation runs out. 
But even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. <coughs> Poor Mr. Edgeworth. What are you showing me this picture for? Um, uh, no reason. You know, I was impressed by your de deduction in the trial today. Granted, you were at the end of your rope, but still. Nick, you noticed! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, see ya, Edgeworth. He's out again. When does he work anyway? No, no, don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later. Okay. Hey, Larry! Hold on, let me show... Let's see what else I can show. Hold on. Okay, I don't think I can show him anything. <clears throat> Here, take the bullet, Larry. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> he's just... Uh, he's just... No thoughts at empty. Alright, thank you, Larry. Hold on. Sorry. <coughs> Bro, I'm trying really hard not to die. Hey, hey, pal! Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. A close one today, huh? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Oh, uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal! Thanks to you, we know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm an off to catch me a criminal. Uh, Detective Gumshi sure is active today. Oh, what other thing? Eek! No one could go into the woods today. The woods? Mulatto was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park rangers found out. He got pretty mad, no one can go in for a while. I guess Lada's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow! Awesome. Someone just chilled from the bare leaf trees today. What is it about winter that turns people into poets? I don't know, but my toes are starting to feel numb. Yes, my poetry has an effect on some people. <laughs> uh, picnic on the weekends, but no waterfall. Yeah, no waterfall. A lot of heart is in a lot of trouble. Hee wee 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 wee. Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. Yeah. That is a fair. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. <laughs> Oh, hello. Uh, what might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Ghostberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, yeah, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not sure about that. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? The rental shop doesn't look like anyone's around. The caretaker must have run for the hills, huh? Yeah, looks like it. 
He didn't seem like a bad person. Hmm. There's a forest here beyond these bushes. Nick! The forest! There's someone in there! You're right. There's a few policemen in there. They, they must be looking for the caretaker! Good luck. Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! Uh, hey, hey, it's Polly! I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello! Hello! I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police knows about her anyway. I'm, sh I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's going to hate me. <laughs> Except when I got away from us was the caretaker and we did see him. Why do I feel like we're having two different conversations right now? Uh, it doesn't look like he used this kitchen much. You're right. I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. Blah, blah, blah. Ah! But what's wrong? Huh? Oh, n never mind. What? Tell me. Just when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. No. See, that's why I didn't want you to know. Oh. That's fine. Yeah, everything is cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. I guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. A certified... Bro, uh, moment. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. I'm sure he won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. He showed us something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey. Um... Uh. I'm a little confused. Did I miss something? There's some boats floating at the dock. The murder took place on a boat from the stock. Apparently, the police took away the actual boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's space for more boat at the dock. <sighs> Where the fuck do I go next? <laughs> He was pretty happy about saving Mr. Edgeworth. True, we all went big. No one's going to sit here on cold day like today. Well, unless they were eating a samurai dog. How would that change the temperature, I wonder? You seem troubled, Nick. N no, who, me? This lake sure likes to cause problems, doesn't it? I mean, everything that happened here turned out to be a lie. Gordy was a lie, and the charges against Mr. Edgeworth were all lies. I guess you're right. I mean, I'm glad the charges were all lies, but still. F 
Fuck! I didn't mean to go here! Man, what the fuck do I do? Grossberg is in here. Um. Did I miss something? I didn't miss anything! I'm so lost! What does this game want from me? That reminds me, Nick. Paul here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight! Wah. Let's open it, Nick. Come on! I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Uh, but hey! He keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's How see what's in there. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? No, boring! Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth! <gasps> Nick! Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing! Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in the court. It's all here in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And... What does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Okay, well... I wonder, why did the caretaker did that, uh, didn't take the letter with him? He left in a hurry. I don't think he even came back here after the trial. Jesus Christ. Alright. Wait, no, we want to go to... <gasps> One day left, Nick! Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste, let's get going! What do you think we should do now, Maya? You would know best, Nick. Just do what you do, that should work. Okay. Well, had any good ideas? This is all tied to the DL6 incident. We better find out as much as we can about that murder before tomorrow. Something that happened back then has a hold on Ezra and it won't let go. Hold on, I'm gonna quickly be right back. I need to get a drink. My throat is parched.
I return with a nice, good, cold Coca Cola. Ah. The good old Coca Cola. <laughs> All right, you're not here yet, asshole. What was that about helping me out? Pfft. All right, hey, Andrew, if I got some bad news for you, buddy. Uh, let me show you this. Um, Andrew, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge on me. Who is that old guy anyway? I I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant? You got you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man, not at all. So he's following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance? Why, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the Statue of Limitations and the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. What? What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. H help! I can't breathe! Quiet. I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout. You'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh, but isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? A nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed. A memory of a murder. I think the time has come to tell all. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wonder if he's the one who killed his dad. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout. You'll just need more oxygen. I, I can't breathe! You, you're using up my hair! What? Stop breathing my air! I'll, I'll stop you! Oh, uh, wh what? What are you? Stop breathing my air! No, father! He's attacking father! Then I see the pistol lying by my. Ah! I didn't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I picked up the pistol. Oh my god, he shot his dad. 
And with that scream, we're awake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But, but... That's just a dream, right? Right? The thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut up memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Thinking, think about it, Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth! You, you mean? It was me. I was a true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe... There is, Nick! There's someone else who knows about DL6! Grossberg. M Mr. Grossberg! Oh, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. But my, my... Just calm down and tell me what's happened. It's M Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> I, I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder. Wh what? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled? Hmm? Well. Also, consider this. Yogi quite clearly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream, it was real. As you imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw his pistol to save his father. The pistol fired and the deed was done. No! I don't believe it! Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irrelevant, irre irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge uh, on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, to with that statue of limitation so close. What do you think? Uh, what do you know about Edward's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer, uh, one peer now that I think about it. A mentor, my affair. My sister. Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma's extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. As a result, he has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on the spirit to meet That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right, everyone thought she was... You see, yet now that I think about it, it seems the, uh, the one who lied was Gregory Edwards' ghost. Gregory Edwards must have known who shot him. I... I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? Uh, that... Ed that... That... That Edwards' dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, my dear, but a possibility nonetheless. Ay 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 Oh ho, so this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? 
He never trusted his clients, that one. The one thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite indifferent. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. You'll understand soon enough. Wait! What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Hmm, could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? No, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma, Von Karma. W wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But, but that means that the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeriff? This incident took place 50 years ago, tomorrow, so tomorrow we'll see the completion of not one, but two trials. All things to the statute of limitations. However, I'm afraid the damage a deal succeeded has done will never be eased. Gregory Edgeworth. He was a gifted man. His death was truly a loss. I wonder what would have become of one karma were he alive. Uh, she was a beautiful woman. I'm truly sorry about what I did. Huh? Sorry about what? Uh... In any case, it's good that the one shooting it isn't Miles. You bet it's good! I can't believe the fiendish planning that uh, went into this is murder, and we almost fell right into his trap. What a creep! Jesus. If it truly was Mon Karma who wrote this letter, then he wouldn't know the truth. He would know that Miles Edward had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edward guilty. Oh no. But, but how could Mon Karma know about Mr. Edward's past like that? Even Mr. Edward thought it was just a nightmare. Mm, that I do not know. Yet I do know that Mon Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edward by hurting his son. What, uh, what do you mean? It was 15 years ago, Von Karma met Gregory Edward in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. What happened in a trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth uh, accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in as many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe! You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Well, if he wanted to re uh, keep a perfect record so badly... Why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is going to bring up DL6, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edward pleads guilty to DL6? I will let him! Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that! I just believe in Edward's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. B but Nick, Mr. Edward admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty.
Mr. Wright. If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, th thank you. I can promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials. Hmm. It's okay. <laughs> I just... Actually, so gay. There's hardly anyone here. I must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Uh, see, I don't think Gumshu will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Uh, sounds like Detective Gumshoe's pounding the pavement for real. That's a weird way of going about that. And we were wondering if we could check out the records room again? Well, no, I can't have this anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now, anyway. Uh-oh. Von Karma? Yeah, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room! Nick, let's hurry! Points a finger at you! What are you doing?! Bestie, as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had the time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing, I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. Huh, one of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking at it recently. The label says unsolved cases evidence. Huh. Unsolved cases? The file for DL6 is completely empty! But what? What are you doing in here? The, the, the Karma! Ew. How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Oh, that's team. Oh. <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me, meaningless things. Nick, let's get what we need in- Oh my god. Hey buddy, what you got there? <laughs> uh, um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shut that veneer of amateurism. That's like his father, always second right. Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edwards, didn't you? Eh, a grudge against a mere defense attorney, why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. So you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of the trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. You were right. So when Karma is going to bring up DL6 in court tomorrow. Well, buddy, then what is all of this? I'll gladly. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So you admit it! You wrote Mr. Yogi this letter! Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. Wh what Nick! What's the thing? A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will, of course, through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000... Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it. Now give me that letter. No. No! Well, what are you? Nick, run! Holy shit! M Maya!
because it's gone, of course. And he took the deal six evidence, all of it. I have to have it no close. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya! Is she okay? Ma Maya! Maya, open your eyes! Maya! The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, are you okay? I... <laughs> well, that was a shocking turn of events. Sure was. I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm... useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya! Oh, there has to be some way I can help her. Uh... What is that, a bullet? Deal six and evidence number seven, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. When Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Oh god. Uh, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is this trial? Holy fucking shit. This is it, Judgment Day. Today things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Ah! What's the big, de big idea? So sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the sun gun yesterday. Anyway, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth was looking glum as always. I hope when Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! But what are you doing? S sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge? Right, good idea. Oh my god. Oh yeah, Paul! What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe! Morning, Mr. Edgeworth! Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? Oh, ha how did it go, Detective? Have no fear! As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in to call night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he have revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Oh dear. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. And the prosecution is ready. Uh, right, very well. We have researched, uh, reached the final day of our proceedings of this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be honored to silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Carbo, for your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. And as for his trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in a boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness has not run away. Uh, the witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I see. Very well. 
I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. Well, I was running away or nothing. I went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. <laughs> Very well. Let's begin a cross examination, shall we? Yanni Yogi, you're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. I'd call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. Then why did you leave? Ah, uh, if I say, ah! No, go back! No, 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 no! Go back! Go back! Go back! Go back! Holy. Food? Well, uh, well, <coughs> my fucking throat. is a bit of a good man, you see. Surely it's these high-quality bread pals from France. We only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until, uh, you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker's shack? Uh, well, I can't have got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Fun Karma. No one's going to believe that. Let's see, so he was lost. Please, your honor, come on, you come to your senses! You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, uh, yep, seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh, or, maybe you're lying about not having your memory? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clear that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Very well with us, please continue. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. It's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes, yes, Your Honor. You've been saying the same thing over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lag therefore into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. But both of these statements are lies. Order, order, Mr. Wright. There is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying, are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho oh, ho ho, now this is interesting. I would like to know myself, so who is he? I'll play dumb one, Karma. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? The name seems familiar. Oh, Yanni Yogi, from the DL6 incident. I figured the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor? Please take this man's fingerprints. Then I'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. Now you see, that makes sense. Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But why? 
What the fuck are you talking about? What? What? No fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingers working with the stuff I you. Wh what? You burned your finger prints to off to hide your past. I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No! Well, what do you really do now, Mr. Wright? It seems that the case has been decided. No. No, I know what happened. I know everything. I just can't prove it. No, I can't let it end like this. There has to be evidence. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine this parrot for a little com comic relief. Wait! No, actually! Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot. That's actually a genius idea! No, you're not going to. Long and soft noodle fix over the 10 gifted sub. Your honor. The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my proposal? Exactly. I would like to cross examine the witness's pet parrot! Uh, order! Order! Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Did you even ask? This is a farce! I object! Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy! Well, so want to go- Yes, I'm doing it! I- I- Let the pair take the stand! I will cross-examine her, your honor! This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard! The karma has wrecked every person's testimony, every piece of evidence! Except the parrot! She's my last chance! At least I think so. Let's do it! Bailiff! Whack his pee, -pee. <laughs> There she is! You must make sure that you do not appear here again. Bailiff, wacky pee pee! <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't get that fucking video out of my head. That's quite a bird! Please tell us your name. Name! No, this is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Oh, uh, very well, witness. Who was your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Hello! Hello! Ah! Mm, certainly the most cons concise testimony we've had so far. Well, I'm gonna cry, right? What are you going to do, Nick? I, I don't know! What do you do, Maya? Uh. With this, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Uh, right, what do I say? Polly, Polly! What? Wait! Polly, Polly! <laughs> Mr. Wright, I think we settled everything! <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Please, Polly, <laughs> Yeah. Polly, Polly, have you forgotten something? But don't forget the L6! If I can get Polly to say that here, there will be proof that the caretaker had something to do with the L6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello! Hello! Th that's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot something we forgot. Hello! Hello! Oh, it's not working. Nick, she won't say it. That's a ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Something will matter, Mr. Wright. Wait, don't tell me when Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot, I'm could he? I'm finally back after my trip to Spain. Money identity is scary arrow, hey. Fuck! Shit, hold on. Hold 
Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to us. I believe that you're speaking to the parent. Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yo- God damn. Say fly. Let's just get try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number in the safe in the shack? One two two eight. One two two eight. My, what a reckless parent. Well, Mr. Wright, what are, uh, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. <laughs> Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link the number to the caretaker's true identity? Uh, what? One, two, two. <laughs> Sneaky game. Actually fucking sneaky. Oh my god. You fucking sneaky game. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly save. I mean, I can't. It won't let me. The DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, we're on the file of something relating to... Uh... Um, um, what? Wait. Um, isn't that the time when it runs out? I don't know what that would be. Wait, what is, is it the case summary? I'm a little confused. Um. <laughs> yeah, here, date, location, case summary. Okay, right, okay. Oh, it was auction plea that time. Yeah, 12, 1 to 2, 8. Why would you make the password 1 to 2, 8? Like, how stupid are you? It's on the case summary page. The case summary. Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident, December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. He used the date of the DL6 incident as a number for a safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see, it certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Pah! <laughs> this is not tangible proof! I set my ATM card's number to 001 because I'm number one! You're such... <laughs> hey, buddy! It's no longer your number. It's our number now. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> this has nothing to do with a date! Nothing! Hmm, indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer! One more! If we can just get one more piece of evidence! Right, but what? Very well, witness. You may continue. Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. <laughs> well, fucking what do we do, huh? Show the bird to the bird. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to do some stupid shit. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> 
How about we show this? <laughs> Come on, quickly! Load! Load! <laughs> nope. <laughs> <Objection>. <laughs> <laughs> what does this get? Okay, 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 okay. What if we show Polly the Attorney badge? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> what does this game want me to do? Fuck him. We already said that. I mean, we already. D <sighs> Wait, but we already did all of this. Wait, so what was. Wait, I'm so confused. <laughs> Wait, so we can just do it all over again? <laughs> I can just. You can just do it all over again? <laughs> just, just do it. <laughs> Let's <laughs> redo it. Let's just, just redo it. Just redo it. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually- I'm actually fucking lost. Uh, no, you cannot give the tiniest of hints until I ask. I'm just gonna try shit because I actually don't get it. You need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. Do you mean with? I mean, yeah, it's Polly drink. But where do I show this? What do I do? Try 
trapped in an elevator with the edge of memory loss due to oxygen deprivation after his arrest. Fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. Where the fuck do I show this off? That's Misty Fay. I do I show it off here? No, I don't. Now what do I do? Oh, I got it! Oh my god, this fucking this fucking game sucks. Wrong, fucking wrong one. Um, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Well, I mean, if we say what's her name... <gasps> you f fuck it, hold on. There you go. How fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her own as enemy. Nope, nope, I'm not taking it. We're not here to answer the question, we're here to prove that he is Yami Yogi. Uh, we're helping to just tie the name Polly, Your Honor. The proof that the part is right here. That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on then? Uh, hold on. That's number three. That's in suspect data. There you go. It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide. See? Indeed, it does say that, yes. Now, what was his, what was his fiance's name? Polly Jack, it's Polly. Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see, I guess that is possible. <laughs> A mere coincidence, that is all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix White, does this make you my granddaughter's fiance? He's only seven years old. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness, he doesn't remember! No. No, it's okay. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different! This is the real Yogi! I think if- I think, finally! He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years! W well let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yari Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order, order! Yanni Yogi! So what is who, was it wasn't you who killed Robert Hammond and tried to frame Miles Edward for his death? Yes, it was me, I did it. They put me on witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said it was me. It, it, I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent. Get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiancé, my social standing. Then this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written all uh, out in a careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance after 15 years. This was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth. What do you mean? I am not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth for yourself? 
Anyway, admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Bon Karma! Where's Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. The, the defendant, Mose Edward, is innocent. In that case, at least. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cl uh, cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I'd like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robin Hatt. Uh, any objections? Just here to resub. Have a nice day, everyone. Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. No! No! It wasn't one karma! Wait, what that means? No! Edgeworth! <laughs> I object to your judgment! Wh what do you mean? I'm not innocent at all, as we have heard Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick, I'm just trying to confess he's going to say he's guilty! He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident! He's going to tell them he killed his own dad! Uh-oh, what do I do? I don't- I feel like I should leave it to Edgeware, but- is no. Objection. The judgment has already been passed. I object to I object to Edward's outburst. And something like this happened yesterday too. I believe a certain witness raised objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear. Oh great. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. Wait now. Now I'm curious though. What says if you leave it to to Mr. Edgeworth? Okay. I'm gonna quickly. I'm just gonna quickly check what happens. No, I'm sure Edward thought about this one long and hard. This isn't my place to interfere. Nick, are you sure? There's nothing we can do about it. This is his problem now. Oh, okay, so it doesn't matter. For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yan Hiyogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal of the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statue of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. <laughs> That's certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. The crime for which the Statue of Limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Ugh, it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We tried this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time I will consider the approach course of action to take. Court is adjourned. I'm sorry, Rice. I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you killed your dad? I need to drink. <clears throat> I didn't want to believe it myself, detective, but it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy, just crazy. Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case for what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edward is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? I just admitted to it! 
You confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. He's so gay, dude. <laughs> what? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in the court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Uh, right. You're so gay, dude. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edward has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, for pointless... Don't look pointless. Let the defense do their cross-exam. The statute of limitations on a DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? Nah. None, Your Honor. Von Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Well, Miles Edgeworth, take the stand. Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me something about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. On that day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. And as we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I accidentally opened Discord. I wanted them to stop fighting. The moment later, there was a singular gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream. We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! The same claim Mr. Yogi has made! Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What was the trial your father was involved in the other day? I don't remember things very clearly, only two things. I know my father lost and Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case. Hello, I'm here to buy the work. <gasps> hey! It was 15 years ago, I don't remember the details. That was when Edward pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. Okay. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator. Yes, myself, my father, and Yanayuki. We were fine at first, but then it's time passed and no one came to help. What did you What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bail of Yanayuki's. The safety... Must have come off and it fell from his holster. When he picked it up, what happened next? Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in the days. The gun fired once. Yes, I think after I threw it, uh, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've etched, uh, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream. To this day, yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as long as I live.
Hold on. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? <clears throat> yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor, unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Look at the victim's data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accident of firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice, however, when we do know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of the shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other fired... <laughs> no, we don't. Do we? Do you have proof that the other shot fire had something to do with the case? Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible! Not now, Mr. Von Karma. Save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. I the only thing that I can show is this. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Up here! 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 Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. <coughs> so let me get this straight. The photo proves two shots were fired. Your Honor, please, please get a clue. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see it, but all on the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol, yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edwards' heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. M Mr. Wright, but who could so uh, that someone be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look one more, once more at the in DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary that's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found in the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. 
He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Andrew's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter, the whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. Order, I will have order! Mr. Wright have, has proven one thing to us quite clearly, that a murderer was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, Mr. Von Karma says the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to dis uh, count the defendant's claim. Ah, fuck. How did this happen? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? Sorry, Maya. I, it looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No, but you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edruff declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it, I thought I won. I thought there was another person. Someone else who fired the killing shot. But now I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood on soul for 15 years. But there is a hole, it doesn't make sense! Only one bullet was found in the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of my daughter before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No, no, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statue of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. <coughs> Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now! Indeed, does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. Just like my first day in court. But my mind's gone blank, I can't find the words. I'M NOT GIVING UP ON YOU, EDGEWORTH! Objection. Your Honor... I- I object! On what grounds do you object? Nick... I don't know, this case is perfect! It must exist. The second bullet... Wh what what did you just say? N nothing! The second bullet must exist, but where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not the, uh, not going to produce us any answers for Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. I- th the second bullet, it, uh, it existed! But we just heard proof that it did not exist. I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The murderer. The murderer. Then tell us just who is this murderer. I'm still thinking about that one. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a straight bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? What the fuck is that question? Well, clearly to f fucking. I I don't fucking. Uh, what is this weird line of questioning? had to reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Had to take it. Had to take the murder. What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Yes, Your Honor, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. 
Had to? Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Maybe the bullet hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer! J just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. Y you know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot. And they left with the second bullet still inside of them. Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yes, I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murderer came from outside, yes. The two men fighting inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picked up the pistol to his feet and throws it. The pistol is charges and a bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! The one involved with the incident was wounded! No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right, I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick, I just thought of something really crazy. Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edward dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for that man. That was the ver the first and the very last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take the vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean it could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident! He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth! It was Von Karma! Something wrong with Sir you seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated that the possibility of the murder came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh, should I come out and say it now? I feel like we should save it for a better time. Like, because if we do it right now, he's just going to... Everybody's just going to think we're crazy. I don't have enough proof yet. This is my trump card. I better save it for the right time. I'm fine, Your Honor. Sorry, I didn't see that. That said, we have no further to go. All that is left is to finish. Uh, words to verdict. W what? Not yet. Thank you, Mr. Wright. You have said that someone from the outside was the murderer. Yet it cannot suggest anyone as a possible suspect, which means that conjecture is worthless and will be rejected, of course. I think now's not the time to be holding on to that jump card. Okay, I guess. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? Uh, uh, my hands are shaking. Von Karma! Von Karma? You mean THE Von Karma, the prosecutor, the one standing right over there! Bah, you don't object! I see no need. Well, I honor this ridiculous uproar with my objection. Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incidents. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took my vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Nick, let's find out who this doctor is. That's no use. The Edgeworth? I know Von Karma perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He's prob he probably didn't undergo surgery. That will leave a doctor as a witness. Nobody's that perfect. S so what, Nick? If Von Karma pulled a bullet up by himself? That's insane! No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Well, Mr. Wright. You didn't produce evidence on it. Is it still inside your body? Wait. 
Wait, that doesn't make any sense, dude. <laughs> I wonder if you can use the metal detector to see if it's still in Please tell me we can do that! Please! Please tell me we can! Alright, Mon Karma, I'll prove it. I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. What the evidence on proof of my karma struck even with strange leaving in heaven! No way! No way! So that is the worst of every- You don't mean- I do! There's a ball in the ball that's still inside my karma! Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. <laughs> we can use this metal detector. Oh my god! You can do it this way. I refuse. Yet you refuse. But refusing this means you acknowledge that your bullet is still inside you. Order, order, order! Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, we call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations was not on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Enough! I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. Please be. <laughs> and right to the right and set his right shoulder. The bullet! Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you! I was afraid this would happen. And so I remained silent. I need there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, 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 Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. B Mr. Wright, well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course you can't. You don't have any evidence of the DL6 evidence. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. But what? You were close, one day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. But what? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. I mean... I would say the bullet? But... <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm... I feel like I, this is like it.
I don't get it. <laughs> Th that's a bullet. Where did you get that? Uh, this is the bullet used in DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings? You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. And it's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edward's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We can analyze both bullets. And if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol and the other words the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Van Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Oh, wh whoops, I didn't mean to. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Van Karma. Oh. That scream. I. Oh my god, I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Oh, I can't breathe! Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Get away! That's that scream I heard in the elevator. Fifteen years ago. Von Karma! It was you who screamed! Mr. Von Karma! So it was you. Oh my god! Oh my god! Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record! And you- you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! I'll bury you! Chief Prosecutor, I'm sorry. When Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of ever. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. But I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. It was a shock like none I had ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. I was in a court records room. I must have... Uh, uh, whoops. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way back to the elevator. I pressed a button, but nothing happened. And there was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Watch to my surprise, a pistol at my feet. I knew then it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregor Edward was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Who would have thought another man would come to open that elevator door? Judge? Well, what? Are you, what are you doing? Do your job! Bring an end to this miserable charade! Now! End it! B very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty! Let's go! <clears throat> Yay! That is all. This court is adjourned. <clears throat> Nick! Nick! We did it! Did you see his face when Karma looked even paler than usual? He's pretending to be all cool, but ins uh, inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed! 
I gotta say, I'm impressed. Edge King, thanks so much for the 10 euros. Mon Karama, you are here found guilty. Balif, put him in cuffs and whack his all seriousness. Something you may have noticed, anytime Bon Karama was stressed out, he would grab his right shoulder, where the bullet was. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself, but now it's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah. I... I'm not right, sure how to say this. It's time to line up and give Edgy some victory kisses. I know, I know. Try, thank you. But I see. But, but, thank you, right. You, you're welcome. They're both so cute. <laughs> I think you could have done better than that. Mm -hmm. S sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Woo! Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would! I'll never forget this! I owe you one, pal! And tonight, let's party! Dinner's on me! Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you! Hmm, well, I see. Ugh. Whoop! I, I feel foolish. Don't worry! Take a little at a time, and we'll get used to it! It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth the Sun Guarded. Hey, y'all! Lana! Y'all were great in there! Thank you! Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank you all. Thank, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You, you were the witness in the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quickly. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that hot that guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Kyonze. She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. He's leaving me, man! Never <laughs> seen that one coming. Yo, Edgy, there you are! Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy! Here's a little gift from me in celebration! Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Potts! You coming along night tonight, too, my th treat pal! <laughs> yeah, thanks! Looking forward to it! Yo, yo, Nick! That's a suit that, question uh, suit that questioned me! When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to, celeb uh, to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Uh-huh, what a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38, exactly? <laughs> Nick! Was that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgerford in school? No. No! Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. But think back to that day, 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. And he was the one... The <laughs> and then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. <laughs> and everyone's good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? <laughs> yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When someone, when something smells, it's usually the bugs. I know, I know. Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth. Hmm? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago. Don't you think the Statue of Limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. <laughs> there you have it! Grr. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did! Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. 
<laughs> yeah, he got worked up too easily too. Death, the death sentence for both of you. Man, if only I'd known I would become a prosecutor. The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. Though I might, though I thought I might be a criminal. I, be I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth, want to switch, right? Hey, y'all, line up. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time, let's go. <laughs> after that, dinner on me. Detective Gumshoe took us uh, out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom, even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. Aww. Whoa. I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Aww. G goodbye What time is it? Ah, the first trains for the mountains have already left to the station. I guess I'm too late. Hey! N Nick! Maya! So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? But wait What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yeah, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. I, I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Uh, evidence? You had the bullet. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining the DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was, an, well, this was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See, See you soon, Maya. Aww. Thanks, Nick. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page and say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. <laughs> With the same old crazy cast of characters. <laughs> what, Mr. Wright? Perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, uh, wait, what the hell? Wait, was that the end? Hey, pal, Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Woo, Detective Gumshoe! <laughs> Then he hung his head and lo, I went right back outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? What the hell? Ha! Ah, Nick! No, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. <laughs> Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you'd call a cheap date. Oh, <laughs> she's in Hawaii right now, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, right, yeah, I remember him. I heard he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Sure. Okay. Phoenix Wright, mm. uh, the defense attorney from whom I wrote that affinity for. Oh, you should know. I've taken over management of the Gate Watch Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. <laughs> oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright, I as me as understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing, haven't seen him of late. Ah, oh, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Nice. Phoenix Wright is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Did you know that they're... Uh, they're, 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 they're I don't know what to do. We know where I'm sitting. Everything these days. Horse, horse. What? <laughs> I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is it. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. <laughs> oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know? <laughs> Why are you constantly gifting subs to characters? Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit but didn't have time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at anyway? Yep. Right? Who's that? You wanna talk? Let's talk, Pink Princess. Alright. But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day and I saw her. The one inside the Pink Princess suit. <laughs> Ugh, what a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. Yeah, I remember, right? What a lawyer guy. Hell, me, I'm in train to become a paranormal photographer. You know, that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real? Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. Yeah, are you talking about... Yeah. Oh, there she... Oh, that's so... Oh, that's so cute! What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> A new episode? Okay. I have time, so... <laughs> Let's go, I guess. Whoa! What the fuck?! Uh What the hell? There's so much production value.
It's been two months since Maya left the office. Two months without a single trial. I've had offers, but none I took. That is, until the day that girl showed up. Long and soft, dude, the 50 euros. Dude, dude. Why do I come here to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. There you are, finally! Where have you been? My sister's trial is tomorrow. Um, who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. It only matters who you are. The famous defense attorney, Mia Fey. Oh, uh... Oh, uh, you're not Mia Fey, are you? I I'm sorry, but Mrs. Mia Fey no longer works here. So, you are the coffee boy? I'm Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. Right, right. Wait, you're the Phoenix Wright. The Phoenix Wright from the Edgeworth murder case? Um, yes, that's correct. It wasn't Edgeworth who was murdered, though. Uh, that's a relief, then. You're better than nobody. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. Uh, but you're a Phoenix Wright, right? The undefeated defense attorney? Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try elsewhere. Please, I'm out of time. But please, you have to help me. It's my sister. Oh. Maya? Could it be? Okay, I'll hear you out. R really? Thank you so much. My name is Emma, Emma Sky. I'm a scientific investigator. Scientific investigator? Emma, was it? So you're a scientific investigator? Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? No, it's just you seem kind of jumpy. Or maybe just young? Young? I'll be 16 years old this year. Oh, I see. Wait, only 16? I'm set to be formally assigned to Forest Sings in three more years. My work is becoming quite well known at my age, no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position then? Well, legally speaking, I guess you'd call me an 11th grader. But I'm ready to do my job at my age, no less. Great, another future professional in training. You know what's bad? I've been, no joke, thinking about making a dating sim. <laughs> And this fucking game is actually pushing me to have more ideas. <laughs> like just a small one, just like a like a test thing. But I thought it would be funny. So what's this about a case? You said the trial is tomorrow? My sister didn't do it. She wouldn't uh, She wouldn't stab someone with a knife. She wouldn't. So it's a murder case. I don't care if there's a witness who saw her do it. She didn't do it. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. And there's a witness. Just talk to her. You have to talk to her. All right, I suppose I will. I promised her I'd bring Mia Fey, but... That's interesting. How would she know Mia? So you want to be a scientific... Sci to figure investigate when you grow up then. Uh, excuse me, I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Still, it's good to have a goal, well, quite a very unusual one. I believe investigations should be done scientifically. Don't you? The way they, th the models they gave her are super cute. Uh, yeah, sure can't fault her for a lack of enthusiasm. If this case is handled scientifically, I'm sure my sister's name will be cleared. You're a sister? I've been doing research, you know. I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. I'll show you when I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. Guess I should get down to the detention center and talk to her sister. My sister asked for Mia specifically. This Mia Fey person was a few years below her in school. So they went to the same school, huh? She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a defense attorney. And, well, I need one. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. Now that you mention it, I guess it is more of a woman's name than a man's. Well, it is nice of you to help your sister out like this. You must be close. Well... Actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her. Huh? But, but she's my only family. 
Your only family. What about your parents? They died in a car accident when I was little. Oh, I'm sorry. Well. Looks like it's cleaning day again at the hotel across the way. I hear they're planning the second branch outside the city. You guess. The bellboy was staring right at me. There's a poster of the seal samurai on the wall. Maya stuck it up there on the day that she left. I didn't have the heart to take it down. I do sometimes get strange looks from the clients, oh, yes. though. The game about husbands beefing with each other. Glad to see it. Yep. Mia's plant. I've taken care of him in Maya's absence. Aww. Mia's desk. I sit here even less now that I've stopped taking cases. I ought to at least dust it off once in a while. Difficult looking legal books stand in a formidable row. They mock me. I tried reading one that it made my head hurt. When I closed it, it slipped out of my hand. Then my foot hurt too. <laughs> That's my attorney badge. Ah, well, I've never seen a real one before. You're the first one who's actually been interested in mine, believe me. Its composition is mostly silver. The gold plating is flaking a bit. He's analyzed it scientifically. It doesn't appear to be any corrosive due to uh, sulfites. I'd give you $50 for it. Sorry, but it's not for sale yet. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> I wonder what's wrong with Emma. She got quiet all of a sudden as soon as we arrived. Guard, I thought I told you I didn't want visitors. Sorry, remember, it's just your sister. No excuses. Why did you not want to erase this here? Oh, understood, ma'am. What was that all about? Uh, hi, Lana. Funny. I seem to remember specifically telling you not to come here. Perhaps my memory is failing? Oh, look, I didn't want to come here either, okay? But your trial's tomorrow and you still don't have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Emma. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Uh, uh, hey, how do you know my name? Mia mentioned you. I've heard quite a bit. Uh, I'm sorry, what exactly is that to y you do? My name is Lana. Lana Sky. Lana Sky? I'm chief prosecutor for this district. You're a prosecutor? With two sisters, what a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? Emma, Lana? I mean, they're just like... They're literally the same. There's something wrong, Mr. Wright. Yes, everything is wrong. There's something you should know from the start. W which is? The suspect in this case has confessed to the crime. Huh? But wait, but the suspect, the suspect is... Me. I did it. Well, Mr. Wright? Well, why don't you begin by telling me exactly what happened? The crime took place yesterday, February 21st at 5.15pm. That's quite specific. It was in the witness's deposition. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Uh, my, that was a bit of bad luck, wasn't it? The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. The prosecutor's office, huh? And your subordinate's car turned classy. I was arrested in the spot, caught red-handed as it were. Well, that's just great. So who was the victim? An investigator with the police department. I suspect the correct term is detective. A detective? Death was due to a loss of blood. He was stabbed once in the stomach. B by you? Death wasn't immediate, but the wound was fatal. I see. Allow me to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. You know what that means, don't you? Uh-oh. What, Mr. Wright? What does it mean? Well, it means... The police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. They will use any means at their disposal to do so. This case gets worse and worse with everything I learn. So you're the chief prosecutor. That is correct. I'm responsible for overseeing every trial handled by prosecutors in this district. I make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do to the need to do the job and, and manage every aspect. 
These are my responsibilities in a nutshell. It's an awfully large nutshell. Still, I'm a little surprised. I would think you'd recognize the district chief prosecutor, Mr. Wright. Huh? In fact, it seems impossible you wouldn't. Um, Lana? What happened to your hand? Oh, this, I cut myself by accident when I stabbed him, that is. Huh? I'm not very good at being a criminal, I suppose. How am I supposed to defend this? She was uh, in the class ahead of Mia, wasn't she? Um, you were in school with Mia, correct? A few years above her? Emma told you that too, didn't she? Well, why not? I did drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems he has very little in common with Mia. I was in law school. I was in my third year and she was uh, auditioning, uh, auditing the class. She was different than the other students. Different. She was strong. She'd do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. That was probably why she was attracted to me. Uh, excuse me? Oh. Gay? Intellectually attracted. Lena was top of her class in school. Okay. I was the best there was. Oh. I'm doing pretty good in school too, by the way. It sounds a bit different when Emma says it. Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, excuse me? As you can plainly see, I am admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say there's no way you can take this case. None. But, but Lana! Why? Why are you doing this to me? You never think of anyone but yourself. I know you didn't do it, Lana. I know. So, how can you... How can you say you did? If I lose you, I'll be all alone. I... I hate you, Lana! Mr. Wright? Y yes? I believe our discussion here has ended. The rest I leave to you. Um, you mean you're requesting my service as your defense? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed, after all. The case is over. Right. I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. Lana has confessed to the crime, yes, but something doesn't fit. It's that look in Emma's eyes. There's something else going on here, and I'm going to find out what. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Huh? About what? My sister, she's not always like that, you know. I just never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. She's changed a lot. She used to be so gentle, always smiling. Everybody liked her. I see. Sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining that. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. I think maybe she... Well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. Let's go check out this underground parking at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Uh, okay! Rise from the ashes, like a phoenix. Is that why it's called that way? Phoenix, right? Is this where you uh, become your job again? I wouldn't be surprised if this entire case is just Phoenix Wright trying to get back and is like fighting himself. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. So this is a lot where it all happened. Looks like they're still investigating. Funny that my first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey everyone, keep up the good work! H hey, what are you thinking? Well, they are going to be my co-workers three years from now, after all. No harm in saying hello. Actually, there is. You know attorneys aren't supposed to examine crime scenes? I'm trying not to stand out too much here, see? Hey there, you suspecting the god notice your partner? P partner Who the fuck?! What do we have here? Looks like a Batman Babina got loose from the ranch and is up to no good. Folks gotta learn to keep them doggies tied. Doggies tied down, partner. Uh, Mr. Marshall. Marshall looks more like a sheriff to me. Looky here, Babina. I know how you feel. But this is my gang's gold strike, see? A strike? This is our claim, our territory, with a mother load of evidence. If we're fixing. An 
an actual cowboy with cowboy music. Let's go. It's actually Matt Mercer. <laughs> Whoops. If you're fixing a mess with what's ours, you'll regret it, partner. Oh, you know what dream they cacti out in the desert dream you want to? What's this guy talking about? You head along home now. Happy trails, Bombina. Was that a hombre? Uh, a friend of yours? Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, he's a detective. Who thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems. What's this? A wallet? Um, excuse me, officer? But wait, what are you doing, Mr. Wright? What am I doing? I just found this wallet, so I'm handing it over to the police. I don't believe it. Uh, this is real basic. Anything in a crime scene is evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. How is that scientific? Sounds like theft to me. I'm called to duty already and at my tender age. Here I'll teach you the trick to examining evidence in detail, okay? By the way, her eyes are sparkling. You can tell she's been waiting for this. Okay. Okay, now look at the court record. Oh, no. You have to be sure to examine Evans carefully on all sides. Now let's start examining from every angle. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh look, I think there might be a clue here. You should check it out with the press of enter. This, this is an ID card. Sergeant Bruce Goodman, ID 58421189. See, well, it's scientific investigation useful. I guess, uh, though I don't see what's, uh, I, I, I guess, though I don't see what science has to do with it. Oh, great. Let's be sure to examine every piece of evidence we find. I can't uh, believe that we haven't seen Gumshoe yet. Anyway, Mad Mercer, Cowboy Real. Wow, they've, they've really, they really just kind of like... Why they only use numerous varieties? What else would they use? Letters, silly! They're the reason we have written language in the first place! True. <laughs> Sergeant Bruce Goodman, I need Yabadam! <laughs> I'm kinda sad that I missed the ending of the base game. This case was added in the DS version, hence the production value. It's amazing these games were able to fit on DS cartridges at all. Glad I mean, to see more people getting into Ace Attorney as of late. If you look at the other games that existed, I'm not too shocked. Yeah, but uh, well, it does have a certain ring to it. Exactly my point. He, it doesn't take much to amuse her. Okay. Whoa. H N N B M O Oh, I see. <laughs> so weird. Wee. <laughs> Why is this fun? I hate it. Oh my god! I can investigate this! So this is what the back of the batch looks like. And I always thought it had a safety pin. Each batch has a number carved into it. That way you can tell which attorney it belongs to. You mean you couldn't lend your batch to anyone? No, I'd be found out right away. Well, that's so fun. Oh, gee, I wonder. Huh. Awesome! 3D items! That's so cool! <laughs> Sorry, I'm having too much fun with this! <laughs> Aha! 
A ladder. Um, that's a step ladder. What's the difference in scientific terms, please? Scientific, huh? Look at the basic nature of things, Mr. Wright. This all seems so horribly familiar somehow. Look, a stylish glass-walled room. Very nice. You can see the whole parking lot from there. It says security. Perhaps it's a cafe? Huh? Cafe security. Yeah, that must be it. Let's check it out later. Um, I hate to break it to you, but I think that's probably just a security guard office. You know, I scored a 97 on my science test the other day. Too bad I don't have a test for common sense. This is where the cars leave the lot. The arrow on the ground makes it look more like an entrance. What are you talk- What are you- Oh wait, I'll make some more- uh, What are you talking about? It's plainly an exit. Well, maybe it's both. Kind of a dual purpose? Aha! The theory of relativity. What? Uh, I've got to write this down. Uh, hey, hey, Mr. Wright. Maybe, you know, was Mr. Relativity German? Or was he British? Mr. Relativity? Are you sure that was his name? This girl is driving me insane? Here, phone, let's see if it works. Hey, don't touch stuff we don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears. No, my ears. Maybe it's due to the bar barometric pressure. What is she babbling about? Hey, what did you just say? Did you just read my mind? See, you can hear just fine. The phone's broken. This wall is in our way. It's got a faucet for water. Wait, I know! This wall is merely a, f a facade hiding the truth. This is no wall, but a water tank! I fail to see how it makes any difference either way. An oil drum. Looks like it's filled with water. I it's heavy! Can't even budge it! The normal breath here is on its side. W wait, I know! I'll hide in here and do a stakeout! I think you'll probably just get arrested. In fact, you may not even have to hide in the drum to get arrested. What? I'm not suspicious! Look, a door! This must- oh my god. I'm not sure uh, that doors mean anything. No, it won't open. A mysterious lock. I fail to see what's mysterious about it. Mr. Wright, we need to learn to enjoy life more. Let's finish our investigation first, shall we? I mean, there's nothing else. I think we found out everything. Oh, wait. Slide to the lip. Well, no time to waste. Let's get hunting for clues. I wonder what this is. Well, partner, it looks like you got no intention of going home quietly. The sheriff. Like I said before, this here's our claim. You best be moseying along, unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. God, scary. Could you just tell us one thing? Who owns that car? Well, well, the little filly's got good nose on her. You want to know who rides that red Mustang with the body in her saddle, eh? Please. No problem, partner. About time for vittles anyway. Get yourself to a salon up on the 12th floor of the prospector's office. Might just find you a uh, uh, curvesa you like. Prospector officers? Where does this guy think he is? And for that matter? Note to self. Look up vittles saloon cerveza. Maybe we should check out. Maybe we should check out room one two o two, the high prosecutor's office. And then, okay, stay away from the car. You can look around here all you like. Just keep your paws off our claim. Right, right. Great. Maybe there are some clues around here, Mister Wright. Let's check it out. Excuse me. Were you two all set? Us? Oh. oh. What's this? She couldn't be... You're selling lunches here? This is a crime scene! Hello! Half and half, was it? Oh, uh, thanks. And you, sir? Y yes Some crunchy goodness coming at you. Uh, thanks. Interesting way of doing business. This area is off limits to anyone without clearance. Especially passerbys. Or are you officers? Uh, no, but you... You don't exactly look like the type to have clearance. 
Well, that's hardly a way to greet someone, even if my days as the cough up queen are over. C cough up? Huh? You know what? I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass on lunch. I'm quite connected to this case, you see. The images are burned into my eyes, you might say. Yes, all the sordid secrets. Secrets? Dear me, you are a slow one, aren't you? I'm referring to the murder, the stabbing of that detective. What? A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. You mean you're the witness? My sister was talking about? Please, cough up, Queen. Tell us what happened. The name is Angel Star. Don't you go forgetting it. Or before you know it, I'll have you whimpering at my heels. Oh. <laughs> Ma'am. You know, I just... <coughs> Love to catch your streams, and your vids are excellent, too. Thank you! Yo, thank you, Milky, for the raid, and thank you for all of the resubs, thank you for all of the gifted subs. I am so lost. Yeah, 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 yes, ma'am! Yeah, she means it. Um... Somehow, I knew. Yesterday it was a day of destiny. I knew something was going to happen. Just like I know that the daily special on Friday every week is salmon. Destiny? Was yesterday special for some reason? You're a defense attorney, right? You should know that. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt this den of inqu inequ inequity. E evil ones? Prosecutors. They have no qualms at all about blackening the name of innocence. And yesterday they paid homage to the most evil one of all. They gave one- I gave an award for King of Prosecutors. What a farce. So she's saying there was some sort of prosecutor's convention yesterday. I was almost compelled to lace their lunches with something foul. Do you have a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of scientific evidence of this um, evil? Young miss. Mock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they call me the Cough Up Queen. Ew! The most heinous of all the evil ones. The one they awarded yesterday. I, it was in his car that they found the body. Proof that he devours the evilest lunches of all. R really? Really what? I'm totally confused. One thing's clear. This lunch lady has a thing against prosecutors. Um, my nose is acting up. I might have to end soon. Ugh, I'm sorry. Objection. Wait. So what exactly was it that you witnessed, Mrs. Starr? It was a fascinating spectacle, to be sure. I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. To see Lana Sky wield that knife so. Her knife flashed in anger, bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. Y you mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties to this world being cruelly cut still rings in my ears. And the rhythmic beat of Lana Sky's knife. Wait a second, you know Lana Sky? Hmm. Of course. It's quite a feat becoming chief prosecutor. How many lunchboxes of sin did she pack to make that journey, I wonder? She always travels light. Now I will with this pretty lunch lady. Know the chief prosecutor's name. Um, could we ask you a bit about yourself, Mrs. Star? I come here every day to sell lunches. I import only the freshest and best from the Far East. For some reason, the box lunches are hit here. Why not make the lunches here rather than import them? Did you say something? No. Only true connoisseurs can understand. 
The kind you can only tell someone who's tried General Tso's Triple O Bites lunch set. Ah, uh, never mind, you win. I don't even want to appreciate part of a Triple Bites flavor. Anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at the prosecutor's office. Y your boyfriend? See the security room over there? The glass walled booth? I sell my lunches, and since I'm here anyway, I drop in to see him. Since you were here anyways, I guess selling lunches is more important than romance. So to scientifically analyze the data available so far, you, Mrs. Star, are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive for coming here. Useful analysis, not... Ugh. Okay. One last question. Did you have a bad experience with the prosecutor as a star? I sense some hostility. Hostility? <laughs> Perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike, and the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Kind of like ten-day-old clams in the chowder. I wonder if Mrs. Star was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past. That'd be, uh, that'd be a sure cause of food poisonings. Scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you're talking cough-up queen. I thought she was just a lunch vendor, but now I'm not so sure. Okay, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna have to call it here. My nose is really not... I'm really not doing well. Um, we did finish the last, in quotation marks, trial. Uh, so I'm glad we managed that. That's cool. Um... That was good. Uh, that was really, really good. That last, that last try. What the fuck, dude? <sighs> okay. All right. I will be back as soon as possible. I can't 100% say when, but yeah. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>